everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're here for the very first time it is an absolute pleasure to meet you i'm jay my husband mike is behind the camera we're british early retirees we've got no debt we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty frugal and money saving life here in Brittany in northwest france now today we're going to finish our round of questions that you have asked us it gets a bit personal today so here we go <music> question that we were asked is do you and Mike get social security at 65? Well what we call that in the UK is the UK state pension and we will get that at 67 and at the moment it is the massive sum of and I say that very sarcastically of about 220 pounds per person per week. We've paid in our full amounts of national insurance contributions. We've got no gaps in our payments and that's what we'd get if we got it now. It, it does rise a little bit um, each year. We will get some French pension because we've been paying into the French social security system since 2018 at 64 years old or older, I think it might be 65, it won't be a lot. Mike's got a great saying, he said, if you put your coat on, you put your hand in your pocket and you find you find a tenner, you find 10 quid, 10 euros, 10 dollars, you're happy with that, aren't you? So that small amount of French pension that we will get, delighted with that. So yes, we will get what you call social security. We will get our British state pension at 67 and some French pension around 64, 65, could go up. The next question asked us, if you could afford it and you had the money right now, what would you buy? Um, we would spend the money on our barn and fixing our barn up. We've got about a thousand euros to save up. We're nearly there to buy the gutters for the barn. We then need to buy wood for new windows. Um, wood to repair the windows that are there, glass to repair the windows that are there. So on top of that, about another, it's going to cost us about 1500 euros to, to do that. However, before anyone starts telling me about getting a side hustle or earning more money, we're really, really patient. We're cool about taking our time to get to our savings goals when we get there. So we're not worried that we can't afford it right now. We know we will be able to afford it when we've saved. next question somebody asked us two things in one question they said how do you budget for Christmas and the other part of the question was do you take a break from budgeting at Christmas okay we budget for Christmas all we do is we stick in an extra 100 euros for nice food into our supermarket budget which is normally 400 a month and our 400 a month supermarket budget is all food all drink all toiletries cleaning products bathroom tissues you get the picture. So do we take a break from budgeting? We don't take a break from budgeting at all because we don't need to because everything is budgeted for. When it comes to gifts as a family, we give each other token gifts. We spend 50 euros per person on the gifts, including the postage, including the card, including the currency exchange rate, the whole lot, 50 euros. So we put aside money each and every month for all the birthday presents, the Christmas presents, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all of those celebrations. We put that money aside each month into a Christmas birthday gift sinking fund. But other than that, we don't really spend a lot of money at Christmas. We've already got decorations. We don't spend much more money. And like I said, we do treat ourselves with an extra 100 euros in our supermarket budget. question asked, do you ever feel tempted to break your budget? And if so, what tempts you? Well, we do not deprive ourselves. We're not, we're not those people. We do not try and live off, you know, 25 euros a week. We're not, we're not those people. So we budget for clothes. We budget for a trip away. We've budgeted this month because it's our wedding anniversary this month to go out this month. We budget for Christmas, we budget for birthdays, 
um, we budget for haircuts. So if I buy toiletries, if I buy skincare products, I've budgeted for those. So it's not something that I have to break the budget about. Um, do you feel tempted to break your budget? Um, if we want something, we create a sinking fund for it. So we want to fix up our barn. So we created a sinking fund for that. We're putting the money away each month for that. So if we want a new car in three to four years time, we're putting the money aside each month for that. So in that terms, it's like, we don't, we don't feel any need to get tempted because we've got the budget for everything we need and the stuff we want. The next question we get asked this a lot. Why don't you have chickens? Simple answer. A dozen free range eggs are 275. A dozen free range organic eggs are 375. Chickens cost a lot of money. I'd have to have a chicken coop, chicken house, chicken run. It would have to be fenced underneath, on top, all the way around. We've got a lot of predators here, predominantly a huge amount of pine martins. I have seen pine martins take pigeons out of the tree in broad daylight. We've got foxes as well. Foxes go walking across the garden in broad daylight. And we've seen, you know, like I said, pine martins scurrying around all over the place. So that's why we don't have chickens. The next question that we've asked said, why did you and Mike decide to retire and stop working? I've got a smug part to this answer because we could. We had no debt, we have no mortgage, we can live frugally, and we also, at 55 years old, took our pensions. Now, British pensions are twofold. You, we don't, you can have a pension where you save up a pot of money, you could buy investment properties, or you could have jobs like we have, where you pay money in each month, it's not taxed, and then you can take that pension at 55 changing it in the UK to 57. But we took ours at 55, so because we could. So we retired from our main careers. I was a teacher, Mike was a local government officer. And to be honest with you, we did the maths. We looked at how much we paid into our pension. We looked at what if we stayed until we were 55? What if we stayed until we were 60? And because of the ch they changed our pensions, we put the amount of money in in the early days. They then changed the pensions. So we would have been putting in more money for longer to get less. So it didn't economically make any sense for us to stay in the jobs. And our jobs were pretty badly paid. It wasn't as if we were leaving jobs which were massive amounts of money. So. We did love our jobs, we really did love our jobs, but we'd reached a point in our life where the time was right, the economics were right, and we were happy to go. The next question was, why don't you create an e-book? So our genre is thrifty living or money saving, and it's already a really crowded market out there. There's some amazing books out there, aren't there? The classic one by Amy Decision. It's just, who would want to, who can better that? Absolutely, who can better that? So it's a crowded market. There's loads of books out there already. And quite frankly, it's not worth the return of my time, my effort of um, getting a program to get the graphics together or self-publish. It isn't worth the return. As thrifty, frugal and money-saving people, what do we do first? We do the maths. And if there's a return from it, we'd have done it. And if there isn't, we don't put in our time or our effort. The next question that we were asked, because we shared with you before that this will be the last year that we grow any vegetables, is why don't you try gardening again, but this time put metal barriers inside all, or mesh, metal mesh barriers inside all of your raised beds. First of all, our raised beds currently have cost us nothing at all. And that's the kind of maths that we like when it comes to producing any food. 
because we live in a country where really good, top quality fruit and vegetables are completely affordable. The last time I went to the store and bought, went to the market and bought a kilo of organic, locally grown green beans, the kilo price was six euros. So I bought half a kilo. In the supermarket, they're around 2.50 a kilo. For green beans, that's about a carrier bag full. A bunch of carrots is about 150. A bag of carrots without the green stalks on top, again, about 150. Uh, a melon, 150. A cucumber, 80 cents. It's not worth the stress of fighting the wildlife. So the voles this year had every potato. Blight had every tomato. The mice have had every raspberry. The slugs had every strawberry. And it's not worth the time and the effort. So we live in our property, it used to be a granite quarry. We have no soil, at best an inch of topsoil. So for anything that we do, we have to grow it above ground. When we get good weather, it just completely dries out. We're having to water it all of the time. We have to go and get horse manure and compost or buy compost to go in there. It's just not worth the mass. So like I said, we're thrifty, frugal, money-saving people. Budget first, maths first. It just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense for us to grow vegetables. And if I was to go out and spend more money, why would I spend more money wasting money that I don't want to waste on doing something with no return when I can buy vegetables from the market or locally from really good supermarkets that's really good quality at the prices that we get it for? So I hope that answers your question. Another side hustle question. You love these side hustles, don't you? Why don't you teach English as a side hustle? Well, English is really well taught in local schools. They have to pass English at 18 to pass baccalaureate unless they're doing something non-academic. So it's, it's very well taught here. And to teach, in, to teach English, I would have to have a qualification from a French university. To get into a French university would cost me an awful amount of money and I would have to have native speaker level of French and pass the exam at C1. My current level is A2. You can see I have a long, long way to go. I could teach casually as a professional liberal and set myself up, but on average those English lessons here pay about 12 euros an hour. I'd have to get in my car, cost me money, wear and tear on the car, fuel. I'd then have to go to people's places because don't forget, I can't run two businesses from the same premises. So I would then have to go to people's houses and teach them French and for 12 euros an hour and hand over 26% of that to social security payments, which I thought would bring me down to about 10, about 10 50 an hour, which is below minimum wage. So there we go. I used to teach online. I worked for Wales English for about three years. I earned 30 US dollars an hour. We were paid in US dollars. And that company closed. The big market for teaching English was teaching Chinese children English. And what the Chinese government did, literally overnight stroke of the pen, was to ban that. So if I wanted to teach English to Chinese children, I would have to have a work visa to China and work in China. And I miss that job because those Chinese children were extraordinarily clever, amazing students. But there you go. That's why I do not teach English as a side hustle. The next one, it says, what's your daily frugal routine? And I had to have a think about that one because some days are all about frugality. So for example, Sunday, it tends to be when I do a stop check and a meal plan. And I look through the new supermarket office to see if there's anything that I can add to our supplies that week. Um, I tend to shop on a Wednesday or a Thursday because that's the day the supermarket offers come out. If there's anything else we need to do, pick up pet food, pick up prescription, any of those things, we do it on those days. But in general, so let's go through my day, sort of 
I'm up, showered, dressed around seven, um, tend to have a quick coffee in the morning, don't eat breakfast, do my exercises every morning. I do something called a daily 50. So 50 body squats, 50 press ups. I do assisted knee press ups, 50 lunges, 50 second wall sit, 50 second plank, which I can't do all in one 50 seconds. So I do it in two 25 seconds. And I also do some weighted exercise. I use two five kilogram um, dumbbells and I'll do upper body workout with those. Um, and then I will usually get all my housework done in the morning. And if the weather's good, we do some gardening in the morning or get that work done. Mike does kind of the outdoor work in the morning. Um, some days of the week, like today, we will get some filming done and then Mike will spend the rest of the day editing that. Um, he'll go away after we film this, he will upload this, get it in sequence into the video editing software. I will then, um, in the mornings, I do all my housework in the mornings, make the beds, vacuum, clean, dust, get any laundry I've got out on the line, and then every day I cook lunch at home. We eat lunch pretty much spot on midday, because we've not eaten for quite a while. Uh, I cook at home every single day. After lunch, um, we might sit down for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, let our lunch go down. I then do 15 minutes on my static bike. It's a really good thing after you've eaten for your blood glucose to exercise as soon as you can after you've eaten. I'll do that and then Mike does exactly the same. He does his exercises in the morning. He does the bike after lunch. Um, Mike takes the dogs out in the morning. I go out with him in the evening to walk the dogs. So where are we up to? Exercise bike in the afternoon. Mike then do a bit more gardening. Um, then Mike do some sewing at home. Um, depending on weather, we might go out for an hour, get in the car, go somewhere, go for a walk at like Tadrenic or somewhere like that. Um, we tend to eat then at spot on 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m. we usually eat a small version of what we've eaten for lunch. So yesterday we had some braised beef, braised beef and onions and uh, garlic and stock. And then we had that with new potatoes, green beans and carrots. And then we had a smaller version of that for dinner. So that's what we had in a smaller version for dinner. Um, sometimes if I haven't bothered to do anything for dinner, we might have something like uh, Greek yogurt, a uh, small piece of fruit, um, some pumpkin seeds, some chia seeds, something quite proteiny. And then we don't eat anything for the rest of the day. Um, sort of evenings, like I said, we go out and walk the dogs, weather dependent, pouring with rain as we speak, go out and walk the dogs, short walk in the evening, just down to the lake and back and around the, all around the village and back again, small work. They're only little dogs, they don't need to go very, very far at all. Evenings is kind of a bit of leisure time, we might watch some TV, do some reading. Evenings tends to be the time that we do our online French learning and a recap on what we've learned from the day before, might learn a bit more of new stuff, and um, get a shower in the evening, and then tend to be in bed by 10 o'clock. So that's how we stay thrifty. We don't go places very often that require the spending of any money. <laughs> made it this far in the video well thank you massively for watching thank you and go on hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment share the video subscribe all of those things it's lovely having you here as part of our frugal community and our frugal journey and we'll see you again soon bye <laughs>